just now. It doesn't get much better than looking than that. Goodness. You're, you're just as hot, Doc. You're oh, hot. my God. Don't put me behind the glass now. Jeez. It's not great. <laughs> We almost did the interview like off stage so no one could see us next to Oh yeah, seriously. Right, he said as he walked up, he was the happiest guy in the building. I can't imagine why that might be. Taking a look at this roster for 24. What about the Dodgers of 2024? <laughs> With the best fans in all of sports. Thank you guys for coming out here today. Thank you. Wow. What's this offseason been like for you? We've been asking you guys, but as you're seeing this all come together and, and the pieces fall into place, what's it been like for you? Well, for me, as a manager of the Dodgers, and you see Shohei Otani. You see him from the other side. And he's playing for that other team. And you just see the talent. And you're like, man, if someday we have an opportunity to get this guy in a Dodger uniform, it would be epic. And for that to happen, uh, I just was over the moon and so excited for all of us. And then to say, okay, the best pitcher in Japan, Yoshinobu Yamamoto, wants to be a Dodger. And he wanted to play with Shohei. And for us to make that happen, it was just the exacta. It was <laughs> unbelievable. And then the guy we just had here, arguably one of the best starting pitchers in all of baseball, Tyler Glasnow, from L.A., was dying to get back to L.A. We orchestrated a trade to get him here, extend him, and so now we've got Tyler Glasnow. So it just kept going and going and going, and right now this is excited as we've been in so long. So, I think we can say the same, right? How much did you know Shohei before, and what have you gotten to know about him since he's arrived? So, Shohei, I, I had a little bit of conversation with him over the years. Uh, Dino Ebel, our third base coach, uh, was on the staff of Shohei, and they have a good relationship. Uh, Jose Moda, uh, who does our broadcasting, has a great relationship with Shohei. And so for me, it was one of those things as a, as a, as an opponent with players, you got to kind of toe that line uh, by not getting too close to them, but still admiring their talent. So uh, over the last month and a half, I've gotten to know a lot more and look forward to getting closer over the months. You got some time to answer this question, Doc, but I, I, I got to ask it to you. How many nights of sleep have you lost debating the two and three spots in the order? Okay, so here's what I want to do. We've got this conversation I've had a lot. So, Mookie Betts, Freddie Freeman, and Shohei Otani. So, here's what I want. So, everyone says, hey, Doc, who's going to hit first, who's going to hit second, who's going to hit third? So, here's what, here's what we're going to do right now. So, we're going to go by a cheers. All right. So... I'm not going to hold me to this, but this is going to influence my decision. Okay, leading off for the Dodgers in 2024, Freddie Freeman. These are smart fans. They love Freddie, but they know that might not be the same. Leading stop. off for the Dodgers in 2024, Shohei Otani. Leading off for the Dodgers in 2024, Mookie Betts. Okay. Mookie Betts, Mookie, wherever you're at, you're in leadoff this year. Okay. Hitting second for the Los Angeles Dodgers in 2024, Shohei Otani. Hitting second for the Los Angeles Dodgers in 2024, Freddie Freeman. So hitting third for the Los Angeles Dodgers, number 17, Shohei Otani. That was pretty simple. That was pretty easy. 
Thank you guys very much. I appreciate that. Yeah, we can do this like more often and make some other decisions yeah, easier. So <laughs> <laughs> and join your catching. Amazing. <laughs> Uh, we're only a week away, which is crazy. Things get moved up with Korea starting the season extra early. What are the emotions as you, you're starting to pack your bags and getting ready to head to spring? I, I think for me, it's, um, you know, every year is different. And this is going to be more different than any uh, as far as the players we brought in. Uh, certainly uh, the language barrier, the cultures. And so for me, as a manager, trying to uh, set a tone, a theme, uh, a mindset for our guys going into spring training that we can uh, look back at, look towards, remind ourselves of uh, through the summer uh, to sustain.